Hi everyone, Simon here with a review of Batu Ta Batu. Batu Ta Batu, which means join and join in Basque, is a colour tile based puzzle game for one to four players that's available on PS4 as you see on your screens, but also Xbox One, Nintendo Switch and PC. The game reminds me heavily of Spanish tile mosaics, or balbosas apparently, according to the internet. I bet that's wrong. <laughs> um, where it's all kind of... It's got that South American vibrant carnival vibe with all of the colour palettes. It's very tactile and past uh, pastel-y. Um, and that kind of plays in quite nicely to how the game is played. You start off with a map on the board with, uh, we'll take level one for example, it's got like the room for a three by three tile or nine separate tiny tiles. And the idea is that you kind of merge or join the same colours together. Now if you do it horizontally or vertically, they'll become a two by two tile. You can do like a three by one tile and have a long one. Um, you can then make a square with a two by two. Or you can like go really big with a three by three and make it like a nine tile big one. Um, and the way how you do that is that on the outside of your uh, board, essentially, are various other colours that you can shift or join the, the blocks that you make in the middle into the outside to clear it and therefore create more blocks as you go. It probably makes more sense when you're watching it as opposed to me explaining it, but there's some kind of rules to the logic of this. You must shift bigger tiles over smaller ones or of the same size, and they can only shift like one space, if that makes sense. So if you've got, say, one horizontal long line, that won't be able to leapfrog over like several horizontal lines. Uh, if they're like two by twos or three by threes. So what you find is that as you're moving things around and things respawn, quite often blocks will get in the way of where you want to go. And then it becomes almost like a, um, do you remember those um, annoying slider puzzles where you'd have to slide the blocks around to try and get everything like back to where it should be? It emulates a little bit that kind of setting but um, it's much more forgiving because A, you can kind of shift various things around and kind of make the colour get to the corner of where you need it to go. But also uh, you get the options of um, growing bombs essentially and bombs become really really important later on in the game, particularly when you're playing in endless mode um, because as the board gets bigger and bigger and it's no longer a three by three it becomes four by four or five by five and there's more variety of colors included there's more reason to get it wrong because the stakes are higher you're trying to get bigger blocks so that you can keep going within the time limit and get to the next level of size of map and keep going it's really quite difficult to not get into trouble. So that's where those bombs come in handy. Now thankfully the bombs are part of the actual structure of the game because you can kind of slide them in with different blocks that appear as you go. So that's really really helpful. Um, and that's kind of where you'll spend initially the most part of your game is on endless mode. As you complete games uh, you can then gain coins as you go through it and then that will unlock an additional nine modes as you kind of pay for them as you go along and that's where actually some of the more puzzle-esque and less reactive uh, side of Batu to Batu comes out because there's ones where it will start you off with 36 unique squares and it will say you need to make seven and so you've got to plan ahead of where you're going to move things so that you've only got seven big chunky blocks left and I really enjoyed that mode and it seems relatively simple but actually I spent just as much time in that mode um, called less than Batu than anything else. There's also ones where you've got to kind of shift everything around so that it just become the map just becomes one giant block as well. Multiplayer mode for up to four players can also take part in endless mode as well and the idea of this is that if you ever smash any kind of two by two square into your own colour shape you send like what's a, what are called crappy battoos 
<laughs> over to uh, your opponents as well. So that kind of sends things into the mix and kind of ruins their life as well. So there is a competitive multiplayer mode should you want to go with it. Uh, it keeps going basically until everyone's eliminated bar the leader. So you can't necessarily go for like high score stakes when you're playing in multiplayer mode. It's just who lasts till the end. Uh, like an, an elimination type way uh, but it's still good fun uh, and it offers a unique twist on the game there's one last thing I'd like to mention about Batu to Batu and that is its control scheme which kind of gives the game a little bit of a interesting difficulty curve for the first 10 minutes because it's so alien it took me a while to get used to it I'm going to reference the PS4 controller because that was what I was playing it on but unlike almost every other puzzle game where you use the d-pad or the left analog stick to kind of move around your blocks. Here you use the left analog stick to select your block but you use the symbol buttons to actually decide where you're going to shift it. So triangle sends it up, cross sends it down, so on and so forth. And that took me a stupid amount of time to kind of get into my brain. Um, it makes sense once you're then in the full speed of things but what I did find was that I would still later on, like an hour, an hour and a half into this game, still be like pressing the wrong button stupidly and being like X to move. And then I'd be like, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> so just bear that in mind that it will take initially a few kind of minutes and goes to kind of rewire your brain to the control scheme. Once it's up and running, it does work fine. Um, the other thing I'd say as well is that because you have to shift some of the outside buttons, or outside shapes, sorry, you have to press and hold down L2 and then press the colour that you're going to be shifting around. And that extra mechanic, whilst vital to the actual game mechanics, um, it feels a little bit like um, a clunky controller decision to allocate a real key mechanic of the game onto a shoulder plus another button constantly all the time. So that's about the only criticism that I really have of Batu to Batu. Um, aside from that, actually, it's kind of Moorish. I've preferred a lot of the additional puzzle modes uh, to calm me down <laughs> over the period of time. But yeah, this one's a little hidden gem, relatively easy platinum as well if you're into those. And uh, yeah, good fun. Batu to Batu is out now. There'll be a written review over on higherplanegames.com in the coming weeks. Uh, I'm not available this week for uh, written reviews, but yes, I'll be getting to it eventually. You guys will take care, and I'll catch you on another video on Higher Plane Games. Bye! Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a collection of media projects ran by me. If you like what you see and want to find out more, visit patreon.com forward slash network. Your support can make so much more possible, be that a like, a comment, a share, or a pledge. Thanks for watching.